So this year, against all the odds, the meeting is in person, but we're also making it hybrid so that people who are still having problems traveling, and that's from many parts of the world um, and in Europe, can um, appreciate the meeting. Um, we've got almost 4,000 registrants, which I think is absolutely outstanding considering the huge difficulties which have been faced in the last year and you know before. Um, and what's really encouraging is that we've received a fantastic set of scientific abstracts describing the results of some really groundbreaking large clinical trials and large epidemiology and genetic and risk factor studies, um, in addition to what I think is a really innovative, um, invited scientific and educational program. So I, I think it's looking like the content will be fantastic. And I'm really looking forward to actually getting there next week. So we've got several um, submissions around several themes, just as it happens. So um, something which is of massive interest and importance at the moment uh, is different thrombolytic agents. So we know for ischemic stroke, it's really important to get the blood vessel, get the artery open. Um, and the standard of care for a long time has been alteplase, but new thrombolytic drugs are coming on available with um, potentially beneficial properties such as tenecteplase. So there will be several trials presented comparing directly tenecteplase with alteplase. And this should give us a really um, in, you know, better picture of exactly what the benefits of each are against the other. Um, then we've also got several trials looking at ways of trying to improve the delivery of acute stroke care. So identify people really early before they get to hospital, what's the best management while you're in the ambulance, um, what's the best way of identifying people when they get to hospital for which particular type of treatment um, and whether they should, you know, stay at their local hospital or get transferred to a more central big hospital and, you know, for things like thrombectomy. And I think also most importantly in a neglected area is thrombectomy for vertebral basilar thrombosis. That, that's been a question for quite a long time. And now we've got two trials coming through, both presenting results of um, vertebral basilar thrombectomy. So I think that will be really groundbreaking. Um, we've also got quite a lot of material describing different ways of managing acute intracerebral hemorrhage. This is a neglected area which many patient surveys have highlighted as being an important area of research. So we're really pleased to see um, you know, new scientific evidence coming through on best management for acute intracerebral hemorrhage, but also a lot of data on ways of preventing stroke after intracerebral hemorrhage. So I think these are just all really, really important areas. Um, in terms of things like genetics, there's some really important big genetic studies coming through, which um, probably the most important thing is that they help to potentially identify possible new targets for developing new drugs. Um, things you might not think of otherwise, but so, so there'll be some presentations in that topic. And then on things which I think have bothered people for a long time, but lacked evidence um, on, for example, air pollution and stroke, um, cancer and stroke risk, um, and things like, you know, if you have an acute illness, like a urinary infection or a chest infection or whatever, how does that relate to stroke risk? So really important areas that will help clinical practice.